guys, the Speed Shop. It's time for another muscle bike ride and review. And today we're gonna to be doing this 68 Schwinn Stingray 3 Speed. All right, gang, so this is my 68 Schwinn Stingray um, Stick Shift 3 Speed. I've had this bike for quite a while now, like a little over 10 years. And uh, it's been on quite a few um, of my muscle bike videos, but it's always kind of been in a progression of change since I've had it. When I originally got it, it was just kind of a total basket case, just like a frame and um, crank sprocket and a few other parts. And I slowly just put it together, um, always kind of real low budget. And then um, basically when I got it done, the first time I did a ride and review on it, it's changed quite a bit since then. And I've slowly just been trying to make it uh, more kind of correct. So I'm going to talk about everything on the bike, what's correct, what's not correct, and um, we'll just do a nice overview of the bike. So this is a Campus Green um, 68 Schwinn Stingray 3 Speed. Um, super cool bike. Um, this is the original stick shift to the bike. Um, I did have to put new decals on um, because when I originally got the shift stick, um, it was like spray painted and I had to completely restore that. Um, but that uh, is really nice. Um, and then on the three speeds, you've got this clamp for your rear brake. This is the correct um, Wyman 1080 um, rear brake caliper. And then your shift cable runs over this little wheel that um, goes on your seat tube down to this cable. Um, the last time we looked at this bike, I had a S7 three speed wheel on it. I've now converted it to the correct S2 um, um, rear wheel. Um, now these three speed wheels can be a little bit tricky um, in the adjustments of them. Usually nothing really goes wrong inside of them as long as you keep them oiled. Um, these need to be oiled. There's a little cap on the hub. You can put oil in there or um, squirt some oil in here also. Um, but they need to be oiled to work correctly. Um, Right now I have this um, Schwinn gripper slick on here, which I really think looks cool because it has kind of this old pie crust cheater slick look to it. Um, this bike probably would have come from the factory with just the regular um, black wall slick or a knobby back tire, but this would have been a um, available accessory tire at the time. Um, this is the correct um, wing tip chain guard i put um, a decal on here um because it was missing um this is the original lucky seven um front sprocket um the correct original um to the bike actually um crank um these bikes came from the factory with this style of waffle pedal with this style end on them um that's correct this bike would have originally had like a black chain on it from the factory, but when I put this bike together, I put a chrome chain on it just for a little bit more style. Um, the bike also has these cool little accessory matching green um, cross flag valve caps, which I really like to put on all the Schwinns because that was one of my favorite things that um, they offered as an accessory back then. Um, this bike was not originally a Springer um, bike um, when I got it the original it just had the stock um, style front fork but it was very badly bent and the threads on top of the fork were stripped so I couldn't use it even if I would have wanted to I had this Springers and I love the Springers I just think that was one of the coolest things of the muscle bike era were those Springer front ends I think they look cool. I like how they ride and they just add a lot more style and, and chrome to the front of the bike. So I converted it to like a J33 style look. Um, has the correct little Schwinn bolts up here. Um, the front wheel is a correct um, Schwinn S7 front wheel. It just has a repop uh, brick tire on it. 
Um, the same style tire that would have come on here from the factory, but this is just a reproduction. Um, the stem is actually a 65 Schwinn stem um, because I think this is an aftermarket Springer and uh, usually the aftermarket Springers, um, the hole in them for the stem is like the same size for the 63 to 65. So the later stem is too small. So you have to get the bigger, fatter stem to work, which was not really a big deal. These are the original correct 68 style handlebars, um, slightly narrower than previous years, but still fairly wide compared to what they went to um, like in 1970. Um, now this bike probably would have originally come with a metallic green seat and metallic green grips. Um, but when you went to the Schwinn dealer, um, they offered any kind of color seat or grips um, as accessory add-ons so um, somebody could have opted to swap out the seat and grips to whatever color they wanted to and the dealer would have done that um, so this is kind of still a correct era style um, the black ribbed seat and the black slimline grips um, this is the correct red dot Wyman um, rear brake lever with the um, sharp eye jabber end on it um this bike probably originally from the factory would not have had the black cables either they would have been kind of like an off whitish color um going around to this side of the bike um this is the original correct seat clamp actually for whatever reason schwinn usually um mounted these on the bikes from the factory with this side of the bolt on the other side um it's not really that big of a deal but um that's usually how they came from the factory when i put this on i flipped it upside down so i wanted the little s facing that way it's not really that big of a deal um one cool thing about this bike it's kind of hard to see um but the original um dealer sticker is still on here this bike was sold brand new in wisconsin rapids wisconsin which is about 30 miles from me so that's pretty cool it's kind of a local bike um this bike would have originally had um a clamp on style sissy bar that would have mounted right here and would have come up to about this high you know with the loop so this is a aftermarket accessory um sissy bar that a lot of kids would run back in the 60s and 70s um just because it looks cool and you can kind of lean back on it um now on these bikes with a shift stick and a tall sissy bar it can be kind of a little bit difficult to get on without hitting your foot on something so you got to be a little bit careful when you get on and off of the bike um this is the original kickstand i think it was a 8339 um is the part number on that um this is not the original one to the bike the original one to the bike was totally worn out um so we Put a different one on with a new cam in here and everything um i went through re-greased all the bearings on the bike um we're st this back wheel i had retrued up um these are the original spokes and everything um i probably need to get in here and do a little bit more work because it's not perfect yet but overall i'm pretty happy with the bike as it is right now i don't really have any more plans um to do anything more to it as of right now because um, basically I got the wheels on that the bike should have the tires on um, the chain guard pretty much got it set up um, how I wanted to with all the little details that it was missing um, if you guys have any questions on vintage Schwinn's I try to give you an answer as best as I can or if you just want to leave a comment about the bike go for it but I think we're going to take this thing for a little bit of a ride now all right guys so we're going to take this thing for a ride now usually when I get on the bike I try to kind of put my foot through here um, so I don't kick the shifter 
So sitting on the bike, very comfortable. I can lean back on the sissy bar if I want. Um, I have my bars kind of tilted forward just for looks. So a lot of kids would do that back in the day. Um, but if your arms aren't as long as mine, you could you know tilt the bars back towards you and uh, maybe be more comfortable for you. But for me, it's set up for how I like to ride the bike. And um, this is the view of sitting on the bike. You look down. Here's our shifter, look up, there's our front end. You got that cool view of the spring on the Springer. Um, I'm just a hair over six feet tall and I fit on this bike comfortably. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, if you're an adult or something and you're wondering if I could still ride one of these, you should be able to, no problem. And if you're getting one for your kid or something, it'll be even better. So, um, take this thing for a ride now. Right now I am in second gear. So I'll get out on the road here. Okay. So now um, with these three speeds, you have to have them really adjusted just right. Otherwise some gears will work and other gears won't work or it'll slip in and out of gear. So they are kind of touchy, um, but it's not really that difficult to adjust them. You just gotta kind of fiddle with how much that um, rod screws into the hub and how much tension you have on your cable. But overall, pretty easy to do. Um, now to shift one of these, it's unlike a five speed or a five speed bike, you keep pedaling while you shift. On these three speeds, you have to stop pedaling. So it's kind of hard to do. Um, I'll try to demonstrate it as best as I can because I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand. But you stop pedaling, um, shift into like third gear, and then you can start pedaling again. So third gear would be like your cruising gear. Um, if you're really going down the road, then you would shift into third gear. Second gear is kind of just your nice average riding gear, which I think would be equivalent to like a single speed bike. And then first gear is really easy to pedal. So first gear would be for like going up a hill or something like that. Um, but these old bikes are really a lot of fun. Um, I love hearing all the comments about people that had them when they were a kid or um, they're getting their kid involved in them. That's always cool. And I've also had a lot of comments of young kids and stuff that are into these old muscle bikes. So I think that's really cool. Um, they're a lot of fun. And if you do it right, they can be um, affordable. So, like this bike, I really don't have that much money in. Um, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope you dug the bike. I do have a little bit more work to do on that back wheel. But otherwise, <clears throat> get out work on your own projects. Get those hands dirty and greasy. Stay cool, and we'll catch you cats on the next one. Thanks for watching.